Yo, this is Christian, and today I want to talk about competition, domination, escaping the maze of being a self-taught developer, and taking over opportunities that you might face. This idea came to me today as I was talking with one of my students. She was sharing with me an opportunity uh, that she saw on LinkedIn, right? Someone was desperately looking for a developer, and this guy said, I don't even care about how much experience you have. I just want to hire someone because I'm in such a need of developers and I can't find one. Okay, I just need a developer right now, right here, right now, and I can't find this developer. So if you are that developer, even if you don't have the skills, or even if you have, if you don't have like amazing skills, you can still apply and we'll figure out a way to place you in the job, right? So why am I bringing this up and why am I making a bad name for myself if this student, in my opinion, I don't think she can take this opportunity and I'm gonna tell you why, right? First of all, technically she's not there yet. She still has maybe two, three months of work till she'll be able to kind of take a challenge like that, right? Until she starts to develop a developer mindset, no pun intended, but she was kind of late to the game because of some things that held her back throughout the program. And I was thinking if you would have been doing the proper work or the work that had to be done three months ago when you were supposed to do it, and I guess everyone has issues, right? Everyone has problems and I'm not blaming her for having those issues, but I'm just talking about the opportunity cost, right? Bitcoin dips and you don't have 10 grand to invest into it. And then two weeks later, it doubles the price. Then you could have doubled your money, right? You missed that opportunity because you did not have the money. You did not have the skills to get the money, right? So with always, with everything that we are doing, we have to think about the opportunities that we have, opportunities that we have and the skills that we have to grab that opportunity. I remember one of the first interviews that I've ever done was going to this recruiter company in London, in the city center of London. And they loved me, they loved my personality, they loved my excitement, they loved uh, the fact that I was willing to do pretty much anything to become a developer, to get my first dev role. And I had that luck, okay? But then they asked me, hey, do you have a portfolio? And I said, no, I didn't. No or no, I don't have one. And that means I lost that opportunity. I lost that opportunity of getting in the job market three months earlier than I actually did. If I would have gotten that offer, who knows where I would be now? Probably way better. Probably I would have made more money or I would be in a better uh, situation, okay? You never know. So I'm trying to bring to your attention that every single day where you don't have the skills to get a dev job, you're missing out on, on opportunities. Now, I wanna tell you why it is so difficult to get a dev job as a self developer or as a bootcamp grad that's still searching for a job for maybe six months, maybe a year. Imagine you have this maze, right? And then you have point A where you enter the maze and then you have point B where you have to exit the maze and that's when you get the dev job. Now what's happening is if you're by yourself, you'll be on your own in this maze trying to find a way out and you cannot see from above, you cannot trace from above the right trajectory. So you have to try pretty much every single combination, every single route that you could take and then you have to remember where you started from and you should be able to correct yourself as you're going through the maze and because of that it takes you ages to land that first dev job. And in the meantime you could see a bunch of job uh, opportunities that you could have taken but because you are still stuck in the maze somewhere in the beginning or somewhere in the middle or maybe somewhere in the end which is the most frustrating part right if you are stuck there who knows for how long you will be stuck that maze is a perfect analogy and it just came to me today and I realized that actually I'm putting people through a maze but this maze that I'm putting them through sometimes I stop different parts of the maze right I stop them from going in there for example you don't need to learn. There is like this huge front end cheat sheet with all the things that you should be learning. And it's full of BS, it's full of BS. And I remember I was looking at that years ago when I was trying to study and I was feeling overwhelmed. I was thinking, hmm, when am I gonna actually finish all these things? When I'm gonna learn all these technologies? It's mind blowing that people are still following that, right? There are hundreds of technologies that you have to learn according to that issue to be even close to becoming a developer, right? So I'm closing a bunch of these doors for people and I'm also forcing people to go through different parts of the maze, which I know they are wrong, right? I'm doing that because I want them to learn different things, but I have the bird's eye view and I can control them 
to go through that part and then I'm gonna tell them, hey, you've done it wrong because X, Y, Z. So now they understand why they shouldn't go there. Most of the time, it's not only about what you have to do, understanding that is important, but it's also important to understand why you shouldn't do something or why you don't need something. Okay, because that's when you get a clear picture of what the whole development spectrum is. Okay, another thing that I'm doing is I have the clear path set up for them, but then sometimes I close it on purpose so they can try to find it because they've tried all the other possible outcomes it, that didn't work and they will ask me, hey Bob, what, how do you do this? And then I open the door for them and they can go through and they understand why that door was important. Another thing that I want to mention in this video is the importance of competition and competition shouldn't be a problem for you. When you first try to get your first dev job, right, you'll see hundreds, maybe thousands of people trying to apply for a junior position, okay? Everyone is pretty much desperate for those. But those people are competing with each other, okay? They are competing at the bottom. At the top, there is pretty much, or in the middle, where I wanna be, or where I suggest you to be, there is no competition, okay? Because there is a huge um, need for developers, and there is no, there are not enough developers to fill the middle gap. At the top, yeah, there is a huge competition. That's where you need to learn data structure, algorithms, and all that stuff to be hired for a fan company. But in the middle, there is not much competition. It's pretty much empty, okay? So you have to do something in order to get away from the competition at the bottom where everyone is struggling. You have to find a way to get into the middle ground so you can actually dominate that space. Because if you get there in that middle place, you can pretty much go crazy. Okay, you can do anything you want. That's how I've managed to become so well paid as a developer because I escaped the poverty bo bottom line, right? Where you make minimum wage as a developer, where it's very difficult to get in. I escaped that really quick in less than a year and I got to the top part of the middle part, if that makes sense. So I got in there and I was really satisfied. It took me three years to go to that top part of the middle part, right? And the reason why uh, I did that is because I was trying to dominate what I was doing, right? So not only I'm a very arrogant guy when I go into an interview, I'm arrogant in a good way, but I'm confident. I know how to speak with these people and I'm not getting put down by their questions. And whenever I don't know something, and it happens quite a lot, I don't know everything, I'm asking, hmm, how would you do that? And that's when I learn, okay? And that's when they know I'm open to learn new things. And that's why they offer me different um, perks that others might not get because they are too shy to ask, they are too shy to be themselves. So if you want to dominate, you have to have the skills and you have to do something different than what everyone else is doing. So if you look around, literally look around, and then you'll see everyone is stuck in develop in tutorial hell. Everyone is stuck with courses. Everyone is stuck with having a crappy portfolio. Everyone is stuck with recruiters that don't reply to them. And you are doing the same thing as them and you expect a different outcome. That's a bit crazy. So you have to do something different in order to dominate the market. And that different thing doesn't come from watching another YouTube video because guess what? That's what everyone else does. So if you do what everyone else does, you'll get the same thing as everyone else, okay? Extraordinary results come from extraordinary action, okay? And you have to take that kind of action to get to a place where you wanna get. And listen, I know you like to build stuff because it was always a passion of yours since you were a child. Maybe you're playing with computers, blah, blah, blah. But really, you want the money. You want to make 100, $120,000 a year. Really, that's kind of what you want. If you're in Europe, you want to get one of those contracts that pay 500 to 1,000 euros per, per day, right? You want that. Don't need to be prude about it. You want that. You also want to be able to work from your laptop pretty much anywhere you want, either from home, like I've been doing, or maybe you want to travel and work remotely from an island, like I did, and I will continue doing. That's also fine. But if you keep doing what you're doing, you'll get in a bad position because the competition at the bottom gets very, very, very dense, okay? And it gets denser and denser and denser every year, while at the same time, it's easier to get into the industry every year, okay? It's easier to get, but the barrier goes up because the technology goes up. Technology evolves really, really quick, right? We are living in a different space now compared to five years ago when I was trying to get into the industry. 
very different space. Back in the day, you could just make a movie app with a list of movies. You can see an individual movie and that's it. You would be hired or you could make a weather app and get hired. But if you do that today, that's not going to cut it. Okay. So you have to find a way to dominate the junior mass and get into the middle part of this pyramid that is web development and contains all the salaries, right? I was talking with a guy the other day, he was a waiter and I asked him, bro, he was 31. When you'll be 36 and you'll be still a waiter, if that job is still gonna be a thing anymore, but probably it's gonna be paid less and less because of the inflation and other things. How would you feel when a guy like me, younger guy than you, comes in with a hot blonde next to him, right? A very possible scenario for a waiter and that guy tells you hey bro bring me a pizza please you know for that guy that's developed that's a developer you know he's working remotely blah 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 10 euros or 15 euros or 30 euros because of inflation that's gonna be nothing and for him that's like a day's wage how would that make you feel it's a scary question and it's an uncomfortable question for many people it is even saying it to to this camera, to you right now, it makes me uncomfortable because I know I might get some heat from people. You know, like, how, how can I be so entitled and everything, right? That's how people would think about it. But this is the reality that we are facing, okay? A lot of jobs are getting exterminated. I was yesterday, I mean, I Saturday, I went to a trip to Krakow in, uh, in Poland, and I went past this car wash. I used to work in a car wash uh, first time when I moved to London when I lived there for a month. And that was one of, I think my first job or one of the first jobs that I had. And it was completely manual. But this time in Krakow or in this village, as I was going towards Krakow, the whole thing was automatized, probably with solos. You just put in some cash and then you start washing your own car. And there are not just regular people that do that. There are people who have Lamborghinis and do that. So if that thing got automatized, what other jobs will disappear? And the question is, are you in one of those jobs where time is ticking and you have to do something about it right now? If you're not willing to dominate what you're doing right now, then great times are ahead of you, my friend. So to end this video, this maybe sad video, I'm inviting you to join my free Facebook group where I go live every Sunday and you can get some free training in there, yes. But if you want to get the real deal, okay, if you want to learn how to dominate and become that developer that people are willing to pay you money so you can get the cash in your bank account, so you can buy the Bitcoin dip, so you can invest in yourself, so you can travel and see all this amazing places that are in the world. Then what you have to do, you have to apply for a free consultation call. The link is in the description. This consultation call is some, for someone that's done with what they're doing and you're like, I want to do something about it. I'm tired of wasting my time and I want to change my life. That is who this consultation call is for. If you're not that person, then please don't waste my time and don't waste yours. Go back to the tutorials. Go back to Udemy. I'm sure there are some amazing discounts in there and I'm sure you'll be better off with that. Until next time, Christian.